Okay, so let's look at FTP protocol principles. We want to look at a protocol called the file transfer protocol. File transfer protocol. So we need to understand this chapter, what FTP is used for, why it's important, and how it works. So the early development of uh, standards introduced the foundations of a file transfer protocol with the main aim of promoting sharing of files between remote locations. Sharing of files between remote locations that were not impacted by variations in the file storage systems among hosts. The resulting FTP application was eventually adopted as part of the TCP IP protocol suit. The FTP service remains an integral part of networking as an application for ensuring the reliable and efficient transfer of data, commonly implemented for effective backup, effective backup and retrieval of files and logs, thereby improving overall management of the enterprise network. This section therefore introduces the means for engineers and administrators to implement FTP services within Huawei products. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to, a volunteer number one, You should be able to explain the files transfer process of FTP, uh -huh. configure the FTP service on supporting Huawei devices. Wonderful. Thank you. Is this Mr. Kichinda? Yes. Asante san. So FTP application in the enterprise network can be used to do a number of things. But as you said, really the main purpose is backup and or Retrieval, retrieval of files. What files are we talking about? It can be the VRP image file. It can be the configuration file. It can be log files. Uh, it can be license files, etc., etc. So these are just to mention, but a few. FTP, just like DHCP, takes what we call the client-server architecture. So you have one device acting as a client and the other acting as a server. Huawei routers can also act as an FTP server. They can also act as an FTP client. So for example, your network management system might want to download the log files from your router. So you have to configure your router as an FTP server. Then of course, your network management device will act as the client at that particular point. Uh, you'll, you'll either backup or restore, backup or restore files such as the VRP image file or the configuration file between the server and the clients. So really, FTP provides an effective means for backup and retrieval of important files. And this is one of the operations that is actually considered as a daily operation uh, in an enterprise network, backup and retrieval of files. So that's why you need to understand how to uh, how FTP works. So FTP relies on the transport control protocol, transmission control protocol TCP, and they actually form two different connections. The very first connection is called the control connection. The control connection. The control connection. The control connection is done via port 21. 
So FTP FTP uses two TCP ports. And these ports are what we call the well-known, eh? The well-known ports. So it uses port 21 and it uses port 20. So it uses port 21 for the control connection. Then it uses this for the data connection. So what does that mean? The server, as we've mentioned, you'll have a server and a client. So the server will be listening on TCP port 21, waiting for requests from remote clients. So listening on port 21. So that forming of connection is done via what we call the control connection over TCP port 21. Now, once the connection has been set up, data can now be exchanged between the server and the client. Uh, so we, we can upload or retrieve data. So that is done via TCP port 20, and that is what we call the data connection, the data connection. So of course, when you're doing that, each, each of your device has a file system. Uh, and uh, you have a process that is dedicated to the transferring of that particular data. In order to form the connection, you're using the user protocol interpreter on the client side and the server protocol interpreter. So this interpreters really know how to interpret TCP, TCP connection, the handshake process, if you remember the handshake process. And of course you have a user interface that you're using in order to, uh, in order to, to be able to either backup or retrieve files from the server. Now, it should be noted uh, that FTP really sends data in terms of streams, streams of data. In terms of streams of data. And it uses what we call an end of file indicator to identify the end of a file so that a particular connection can actually be closed. The other important thing to note is that a new data connection is required for each file or directory that is to be transferred. So you form one connection, TCP connection, and you're done. But in order to, in order to transfer each file, you need a different data connection. You need a different data connection for each file. FTP supports uh, two transmission modes. The first one is called ASCII. ASCII is the American standard for, who knows ASCII in full? ASCII. It's called the American. Can someone Google it? Anyone? The ASCII code, American standard. American standard code for information interchange. For information interchange, interchange, ASCII. So that is what we call ASCII, ASCII mode. And the other mode is called the binary mode. Now generally, ASCII mode is used when you're transferring text files, text files. So, when you're sending via ASCII mode, uh, the data, the data is converted from the sender's character representation to an 8-bit, 8 8-bit 8 ASCII before transmission. So used for sending texts. Uh, why? Because 
it supports things like the carriage returns uh, and line feeds. That is the enter and uh, the backspace. So it's able to maintain how the file looks like. So that is what we call ASCII mode. Then the binary mode, the binary mode actually sends each file byte by byte. And this mode is used to send image files, program files, uh, 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 and such other files. So those are the two modes that can be used. So these ones, binary mode is what is used for transferring VRP image files and uh, also other program files between your network equipment. So how do we establish FTP between the client and the server? As we said, Huawei routers can act as both the client and it can also act as a server. So of course, the very first thing is reachability. So your client must be able to reach the server. That is, it's able to ping the server. Then in order to enable your Huawei router, to act as a server, on system view, you enter the command FTP server enable. FTP server enable. Huawei switches can also act as a server, by the way, S5700 switches. Now, once you enter that command, you'll need to set a default directory. So the default directory is the directory to which the client is going to be taken to once the connection is, is done. So the default directory. It is important to note that where no default FTP working directly is set, the user will be unable to log into the router. They'll actually get an error message telling them that they have no authority to access any working directory. So you must always set the default FTP directory. So in this case, we've set our default FTP directory as the flash, the flash uh, uh, drive. So if you don't set that, they cannot be able to, to log in via FTP. The next thing is uh, you can always ensure that you have a user account that can be able to log in into the server. They're used specifically for authentication and authorization. So we have an entire topic called AAA. We are going to understand how it works. But generally here, we are creating a user with the username Huawei and the password one, Huawei123. Then for this user, we are enabling them to use FTP service using the command local user, then the name of the user Huawei, then service type FTP. Then we can also set the, the FTP working directory. Uh, that is especially when we want to have it different from the one that we set globally in the previous slide. So when we want to set a different directory that we want them to access, we can specify it here eh, as their default working directory. Then we have the access limit. Access limit is the number of connections that uh, this person can have at a given time. So here we've set it to, uh, to 200. It can be extended up to a maximum of 800. Uh, so the number of connections, active possible connections that this guy can have. Okay, and then the last one, uh, the second last one here is the idle timeout. So the idle timeout is supposed to be in minutes and seconds. Idle timeout, it's used for security so that if you as the network admin leave your uh, your connection on, after how long of inactivity are we supposed to log you out? Uh, 
So we are supposed to specify the number of minutes and seconds. When we specify it as zero, zero, it means that it's unlimited. So we, we cannot log you out however long you leave your, your window uh, open. And that is a security risk. Then the other thing is the privilege level. We set the privilege level for this guy as level three. You know that this can go up to level 15. And you know that uh, uh, the privilege level three is actually a management level. So they can do most of the things. So we're going to say that when you when you do the triple A topic. So on the FTP client, how do you connect to the server? So on user view, on user view, you enter the command FTP, then the address of the server. So it will now try to connect. So what is happening here? What is happening here is the TCP handshake, three-way handshake. Once the connection is done, it's gonna ask you for authentication. Authentication, so enter the password, the username first here, then the password for that particular user. So it's only after you have been logged in successfully that you are going to be taken to the default working directory. And the prompt is gonna change from Huawei to FTP. Uh, then, we can specify the transfer mode that we want. So we want to transfer this file in binary mode. So we type binary, then enter. Then we type the command to retrieve the file from the server. So it's easy. Get, then the name and the extension of that file. So get vrp.cc. Okay, so that is it. Which ports are required to be open in order to allow the FTP service to operate? Which ports are supposed to be open to allow the FTP service to operate? For 20 and 21. Yeah? Thank you very much for 20 and 21. Are users considered to have no authority to access any working directory? What steps are required to solve this? So it's simply to configure, eh? you simply configure the, the default working directory using this command, default, uh, default, I think it's working hyphen directory, then where you want them to access. So for example, flash, like that. So you simply configure for them a default working directory. Okay, so uh, that is it about this particular chapter. Thank you, let's move on to the next one.